Three quarters of our planet is covered by water, but only 0.5% of it is drinkable. And right now that precious water is disappearing faster than ever before. From Africa to the Middle East, and now California, is facing its worst drought in 1,200 years. Not just one, but a series of projects have been launched. Damming rivers, pumping water back into the ground, and even drinking recycled wastewater. Yes, it costs not only billions of dollars, but also a huge amount of time. But will they succeed before this place turns into the third largest desert in the United States? All right, let's get started right now. You've probably heard about the drought in California, right? But do you know just how severe it is? From 2000 to 2022, this region went through 22 consecutive years of drought. Confirmed by scientists as the most severe drought in the past 1,200 years. If you compare it to Africa, where parts of the Sahara have experienced droughts lasting several years, California is now drier for longer than some of the harshest places on Earth. Reservoirs have dropped to alarming levels, with water sitting at less than 50% of the historical average. California supplies over 40% of the nation's fruits and vegetables. But if the drought continues, the meals of millions of Americans could be at risk. Unlike water-rich states like Washington or Oregon, California truly is a desert in the heart of America. So what should we do? Governor Gavin Newsom has called on people to voluntarily cut their water use by 15% in everything from bathing, cooking to gardening. And most importantly, to realize that climate change isn't some distant issue. It's happening right in front of us. And don't forget California is also the place that suffered some of the worst floods in U.S. history. An unbelievable paradox. The place with the most water is also the driest. It all starts with something called atmospheric rivers. Huge bands of vapor stretching thousands of miles across the sky, carrying up to 15 times the water of the Mississippi River. During the 2022 to 2023 storm season, radar showed nearly the entire state blanketed in heavy rain for 18 days straight. The result, 20 people lost their lives, damages ran into the billions, and countless homes were flooded. But strangely, just a few weeks later, half the state was still in severe drought. Why? Because the rain falls, but it doesn't stay. California's reservoir system is outdated, able to hold only 30% of extreme rainfall, while the other 70% rushes straight out to the Pacific Ocean. The state has long relied on the Sierra Nevada snowpack America's natural water bank to melt slowly through the summer and supply water. But as global temperatures rise, the snow melts earlier, causing water to come all at once and then disappear quickly, leaving cracked plains and dried up rivers and lakes. Can you imagine millions of gallons of rain just fell? But only a few weeks later, everything is bone dry, as if nothing ever happened. That's why people have been forced to build a water empire to fight nature. In the mid 20th century, as California began to boom, American engineers created the State Water Project, the largest water infrastructure system in United States history. Over 700 miles of canals, 34 reservoirs, 24 pumping stations and five hydroelectric plants connect to move water from the north down to the parched south. The most important part of the system is the Edmonston Pumping Plant, where water is pushed over the Tehachapi Mountains almost 2,000 feet high, about the height of two Eiffel Towers stacked together. Every time it runs, the plant uses 40% of the system's total electricity, but in return it has turned Los Angeles and San Diego, once desert areas, into green, thriving cities for half a century. Most of this infrastructure was built between the 1930s and 1960s for a climate that no longer exists. Back then, California had only 15 million people. Today, it's over 39 million more than double what the system was designed for. The second phase, which was supposed to expand the project throughout the state, was permanently shelved due to public debt, environmental protests, and political division. Now, this mighty water empire is becoming an aging giant 
built to control nature, but ultimately being controlled by nature itself. As California's water empire began to crumble, engineers had to think differently. Instead of trying to block the flow, like in the last century, they wanted to learn how to flow with nature. And from that idea, a new project was born, the Sites Reservoir, known as the Reservoir of the 21st Century. Located west of the Sacramento Valley, among the Golden Hills of Calusa County, about 60 miles from San Francisco, this place was once just a dry valley. Now it's set to become a nearly 13-square-mile artificial lake over 260 feet deep. When completed in 2032, Sites Reservoir will be able to hold 65 billion cubic feet of water about 1.8 billion cubic meters enough to supply 7.5 million people per year. What's special is that it doesn't dam a river or build giant walls that break up ecosystems like in the past. Instead, it borrows water from the Sacramento River during the rainy season when water is high and plentiful, then pumps it into the reservoir using modern pipes and pumps. When the dry season comes, the reservoir releases water back both for daily use and to regulate the river, creating a closed loop cycle. Sites Reservoir doesn't just store water, it also works like a hydro battery. When there's excess electricity at night or in winter, water is pumped up. When electricity demand rises, the reservoir releases water to spin turbines recovering 70 to 80% of the energy used. It's a solution that's both economical and sustainable, costing $3.9 billion, but expected to pay for itself in 16 years. Experts call this the smartest reservoir in America because it not only stores water, but also balances energy on its own. But California isn't putting all its hopes in one reservoir. Another approach quieter and closer to home is happening in Fresno and Kern counties the state's agricultural heartland. There, cotton and almond fields aren't just growing crops, they're growing water. This project is called Groundwater Recharge. When it rains, instead of letting the water run off to the ocean, gates are open to channel water into low-lying fields, allowing it to slowly seep through layers of sand and silt, recharging aquifers dozens of feet below. The process sounds simple, but behind it are a host of sensors and satellite maps to identify which land absorbs water, best levels of salinity, and underground flow rates. Engineers call this hydro farming growing water alongside crops. The results are astonishing. After just a few years of trials, Fresno and Kern have restored hundreds of millions of cubic meters of groundwater, cutting the risk of land subsidence by up to 30%. And the best part, it all happens without a single block of concrete. Remember how we mentioned Governor Gavin Newsom's call for people to voluntarily reduce water use by 15%? Well, starting in 2025, California will require the entire state to cut water use by 40% over the next 15 years. Yes, you heard that right. They call it a mandatory solution for survival. But is it fair for ordinary people to pay the price for the mistakes of the whole system, water companies are now allowed to raise water prices, and society is splitting in two. The wealthy buy storage tanks and drill private wells, while the poor are left to ration water like it's wartime. A mother in Los Angeles said on television, I don't know how to shower any less. Every shower I take is just five minutes. Now what do they want me to do? Wipe off with a wet towel. It sounds funny, but that's the harsh reality in America's richest state. And just imagine if you lived here, could you stand having to choose between staying clean or saving water? Up north, where survival and the law collide, farmers along the Shasta River, who feed the whole country, are now absolutely banned from taking water for their fields. But in the heat of over 104 degrees Fahrenheit with wells dry and pastures burned, they still secretly pump water from the river. At first, the fine was only $500 a day. Then it jumped to $10,000 a day, plus $2,500 for each acre foot over the limit. Some families were fined up to $1.2 million, but they kept pumping. Then they realized that saving alone 
would never be enough to survive. They needed a way to create water themselves, and the answer shocked the world recycling their own wastewater. Yes, you heard that right. Just a few years ago, only Saudi Arabia or Israel dared to do this, but now California, the state once known as America's driest, is leading the way. The city of Los Angeles just invested $740 million to build the largest wastewater recycling plant in the United States where sewage, dishwater, bathwater, laundry water, everything gets completely transformed. After leaving the sewer, the water goes through more than five rebirth stages. First, mechanical filters remove trash and debris from hair sand to bottle caps. Next is biological treatment, where billions of bacteria eat up any leftover organic matter. Then comes ultrafiltration with pores 300 times smaller than a human hair letting only water molecules through. After that, reverse osmosis, a technology once used on NASA spacecraft forces, water through thick membranes to remove salt and viruses. Finally, ultraviolet and ozone treatment kills any remaining microorganisms. The result, water that's cleaner than commercial bottled water? Yes, the old water is now purer than the new water. Every day this plant will produce 20 million gallons of drinking water, and by 2035, all of Los Angeles' wastewater will be 100% reused. By then, people will be drinking the very same water they once flushed away, but it'll be cleaner than ever. What do you think? Gross or genius? Maybe the answer depends on just how thirsty you are. But here's the irony. While the state spends billions to create every drop of water, lush green lawns are quietly soaking it all up. NASA revealed that the total area of lawns in America is larger than the area used to grow corn. And in California alone, 75% of daily residential water is used just to keep grass green. The government had to issue a rule, lawns can only be watered once a week. And so California learned a harsh but deep lesson. The problem isn't where the water comes from, but what we use it for. In the age of drought, even old water can become new hope, while lush greenery can sometimes be a sign of waste. From California's story, the world is seeing something clear. Recycled water isn't just an option, it's the future. And that future is happening everywhere. Let's start with Israel, a country in the desert with almost no major rivers, yet they're a world leader in clean water. Thanks to the world's most advanced recycling system, 90% of urban wastewater is treated and reused mostly for agriculture. On every acre of farmland in Israel, 50 to 60% of irrigation water comes from wastewater. Even the flowers you buy in a Tel Aviv market may have grown up on someone's shower water. In Asia, Singapore is another bold example. This tiny country has no natural rivers or lakes, so they created new water, a system so fine that every drop passes through 11 layers of filtration before it's drinkable. Today, 40% of Singapore's daily water comes from recycled sources, and by 2060, that's expected to reach 55%. Interestingly, they even use new water to cool computer chips in data centers, where absolutely pure water is a must. Then there's Africa, a place you might think would lag in technology, but actually led the world Namibia. Since 1968, the capital Windhoek has quietly run the world's first drinking water recycling plant. For more than half a century, millions have drunk sewer to pure water without a single outbreak of disease. And this trend is spreading. Australia is investing $2 billion to expand its renewable water system. The United Arab Emirates is building plants to extract water vapor from air and India has started reusing industrial water for power generation. According to the United Nations, if the world increases recycled water by just 20%, we could save over 800 million people from thirst by 2050. So what do you think can we learn to live in harmony with nature, or will we keep fighting it? Leave your thoughts in the comments and subscribe to the channel to discover more unbelievable stories like this.